everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. Today we're going to be doing an end of summer garden tour. Things are looking really great right now. We just had a bunch of rainstorms and then it's a beautiful sunny day so everything is really happy. But quickly before we begin, we just wanted to announce that we have some really exciting things coming up in the fall for us both personally and professionally. But unfortunately, they will require us to have a lot of time and work and focus put in on them. So we will be putting out one video each month in the fall into the beginning of the winter time. It'll be towards the end of the month and it might be more of like a vlog type style where we're doing multiple projects in that one video over the course of the month. It'll depend on kind of, again, what time we have but we want you to stick with us and know that we are still in love with what we are doing and we hope that you continue to subscribe and follow us along on this journey. And without any further ado, let's begin the tour. All right, so as we begin, our sunflowers, volunteer sunflowers have taken over this bed. So it is no surprise that they are the show piece, but we do have our Atlas roses peeking up again. This is their second flush. We have our phlox doing a second flush as well. And then our sunflowers just really taking the cake on this corner of the garden. You can see some of our purple, this was the, like the purple teddy bear dahlia. It's just starting to pop up, but what you're going to see in this front flower bed is the reason why you should get dahlias. I know we talk about Eden Brothers a lot. We get our dahlias from Eden Brothers, but we love these dahlias. They're so, so beautiful. So this year, our supertunias didn't get quite as attacked as years previously from the budworm. So that's pretty great. We did have volunteer tomatoes pop up again, as you can see. But here are some of the dahlias more autumnal, peeking in with the zinnias that we have. Our big dinner plate pinks coming out. These are absolutely beautiful. And it just continues down the line. But if you have not gotten dahlias yet, please do yourself a favor. They are beautiful. This was the one that was going to get six feet tall and by golly, it surpassed that. It is so, so pretty. And then the pink dinner plates right here. These are just beautiful and you cut them and you make arrangements with them and the more you cut, the more grow. So get yourself some dahlias. We have some more variety right here. Again, very autumnal mixed in and I wanted to show you these um, pinks and right at the bottom these were the painted ones that kind of have the speckles but we have just absolutely loved the dahlias our roses are doing really well but this front flower bed from the front has been just such a beautiful 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 show this year we're very happy probably going to add more dahlias next year just because they're outperforming the zinnias this year and honestly i would be totally happy with just all dahlias so maybe that's on the docket for next year we have some of our purple echinaceas coming up and then if you swoop on over our blanco echinaceas super tunia vista jazzberry and we had only one of our black-eyed Susans grow this year. And you can see exactly where uh, in the bed they start having problems before they're okay. So that is really interesting. Obviously, with anything that has a hard time, it just gives us opportunities for planting something else. So this little area might be changing soon. Then with our new bed that we planted in July with the perennials, they are doing so well. I don't know if you remember, um, they were a little worse for wear with all the thunderstorms that we're having in July, but they're doing so much better in the ground. So again, this rose is pushing its next bloom. It was already here, but the echinacea, 
the wee hostas, and then this rose was the one that was really having problems, and it is loving its life in the ground. We have our butterfly bush filled with bees right now, honeybees, yay. Still doing well, even though it's tucked in this corner. And then of course we're battling the same little caterpillar damage in our hibiscus. It did have a beautiful show in July and it's just something that we're, we have to figure out what to do to get rid of it. What preventative that is going to sustain longevity wise to prevent it. But if you peek over here, you can see what one of the bare, very awesome blooms will look like. The caterpillars haven't gotten there yet. Let's check out the driveway bed. So as we mentioned a lot, the driveway bed is my favorite part of our yard. We jam pack this bed filled with perennials, kind of like in a pattern. We have butterfly bushes, we have perennial grasses that are just starting to put up their fall plumes. We have some lavender, Russian sage. We do have some perennial salvia in here, baptisia. But then obviously our limelight hydrangea standards. These are doing so well this year. They've put on a ton of growth. They have gotten a little top heavy because of the rain, but that's okay. They're really gonna bounce back. They're just doing so well. We love them. These are such great specimens to have and they really don't take up as much space, if you can believe it, than their normal shrub counterpart at the limelight hydrangea. So we love this, but excited to have a lot of our perennial grasses start putting on their plumes these are great for arrangements it adds a very ethereal texture to them so we use these quite a bit in our arranging and then remember that budlia that we're like oh my gosh it's dead it's not dead it's doing great lots of bumblebees and honeybees all over this so that's exciting but this bed is doing fantastic Again, some spots that can have some additions. We lost a lavender right here, so that just tells us that it's time to put something else there. So that is something that we will be doing. Now, our vegetable garden did really well this year. And I'm excited to show you. Okay, so our three corn that made it out of the eight did really well this year. We were able to get some corn, but we wanted to show you what it kind of looks like when you don't harvest it on time and some birds get to the tops of them. Not a big deal. We will take it off and probably just have to cut it, but still edible nonetheless. We're gonna keep these corn stalks to dry so that we can use them later on in a couple months for fall decorating. But our berry bed it did really well. We only lost one raspberry, um, the middle one right here, which is not that big of a deal. We're really happy that these, remember when we planted these, they were so, so little. They put on a ton of growth. And the blueberries did very well in this spot too. They've really liked this location. It's full sun, and I think it's a much better choice for them. So we'll help these guys um, kind of up along the fence here so when they start training but we're excited to get some raspberries for next year then our grow bags holy moly we are still pulling up potatoes so many potatoes all of the potatoes these ones are pretty small but that's okay they're still like ah they're still like russet potato size so very fortunate grow bags were a success in that department probably going to repeat that next year we y'all every year we do actually cut back i don't know if you know that but we do cut back and yet it's still too much too much for us to be able to consume so each year is a growing year there's only two of us we could probably get away with one cucumber plant one 
tomato plant, one bag of potatoes. <laughs> like it's, it's just too much for us. So we have a ton of tomatoes and cucumbers and we have a ton of eggplant all over here. It is an insane amount. It is too much. A lot of it's going to be going to our chickens at school and for the compost just because we can't we can't pick it in time to eat it. We do have some good ones but some like nice small ones back there but it's just too much. It's overgrown and crazy back here. Our tropical containers did so so well. We love how tall these toucan cannons got. Again they will discard all of their spent blooms on their own but the insides the strawberry drop all of the super bells and the super beanas are doing so so well popped with new blooms ready to push new, new growth but I wanted to show you what kind of these spent blooms of the toucan canna look like look at how silly these are they're like fuzzy very interesting it's a cool little texture anyway love the color combinations that it turned out to be and this is something that has really filled in very nicely so in our backyard our hydrangeas are doing really well the smooth hydrangea this is the blush did something very interesting this year because it blooms a lot earlier than the limelight hydrangea it got pink the light pink the hot pink and then green like the really autumn color super fast and uh, I think that was because of the amount of rain that we got in July and also then some of the storms and the heat I think did a number on it, but you can see like the new growth is like itty bitty blooms of what it would look like. So very different than the autumnal vibe that's happening right now. But our limelights are doing great. These blooms are just so beautiful, but you can tell by the weight that happens when they get waterlogged. It kind of weighs the whole bush down, but that's okay. It'll perk up um, and then we'll be using some of these for arrangements as well, just because they're so big and bold. And I like the color as a lime and as it starts turning into the pink as well. So pretty. Our asters are doing really well. And then let's go check out the garage bed because we got some damage over there. So we do have like six or seven peaches that are ripening up in our peach tree. So that's exciting. Nothing like the haul we did last year, but something that is still really nice on and off year. Okay, so in our garage bed, because of how many storms we had this year, our whole trellis that was holding up the climbing rows completely fell and it kind of smushed everything. I do believe the plants are still alive. However, it's going to take a little bit of ingenuity to kind of upheave everything just because this plant does have a lot of thorns, but is a pretty vigorous climbing rose. So that was something that happened. We're gonna have to deal with that. As you can see, it did not kill the plant plant's super happy it's still gonna be fine but um it's gonna just take a little bit to kind of upheave it some stakes probably to make sure it's nice and secure before winter so that'll be a fall project for sure but everything else is doing great our buddleias the black eyed susans back here there is a comb flower back there our grass came back really nicely and then this is the tidbit firelight tidbit uh, one of those um that's having a beautiful color happening right now so the bobo did push a couple blooms this year it has another one coming it's still establishing itself 
it grew a lot this year, which I am thankful for because the first year that we put it in the ground, um, it did have blooms, but it just stayed very small. So I'm glad that it kind of put a lot of energy into the growth of the um, stems this year so that next year when we prune it back, they'll be a little bit stronger and hopefully be able to provide a lot more blooms for us. But it's still super cute, super compact, and we love it in this spot. This is where the other damage happened. Our arbor did not survive that storm also. So this is also going to be something that we're going to have to take a look at for next year, maybe putting something else up here to kind of block off the backspace from the dogs, but also to provide a spot for our wisteria that's growing. Because this is not going to last. If we have another big storm, I don't think it's going to last at all. So that is something that's probably going to be a priority for us over the next couple months or weeks leading up. But our shade bed filled in really nicely. We love the caladiums, that bright white pop. The <laughs> All of the coleus is doing really well, and so are all of the impatience. They're really keeping up, which is nice. This is always a really nice spot. I think next year we might put a little bit more here. I know that seems counterintuitive because it's so full, but I think I just want more colors, maybe more caladiums next year. I really like that leaf structure. Our third damaged thing that happened through that those storms is our grapevine. It completely bent and snapped the wire back there. The entire thing fell. The grapes are fine. <laughs> they are still growing and maturing as they should. So we will still be able to harvest the grapes. Um, but it's just so unfortunate. So we will have to figure out what to do here as well because it's so established the vine part so we'll figure that out but we did find out what that big random plant that was growing in our veg bed was it was a pumpkin so we have a pumpkin growing right here there may be other pumpkins in there it looks like it's going to be like one of those little kind of grayish green colors with the stripes and the warty stuff on the outside. One of those like decorative ones. So clearly that somehow seeded itself in our veg bed. But that'll be fun for fall. Yeah, we'll take it. Our apples are pretty much ready to be harvested. In September, we'll be able to harvest them. Same thing with our pears. They're doing really great. We have harvested a couple pears already, actually. But they're doing well in there. And our at last is peeking through. Doing really well in that spot. The other addition that I really liked over here is how this fall perennial little bed turned out. Don't mind the random pots filled with weeds and dog toys. But the sedum is really full and budded up, ready to pop that autumn color right up against our little baby black-eyed Susans, our echinacea back here. But the Rose of Sharon is really, really pretty. It has really liked this spot. It has non-stopped bloomed. When the blooms are spent, they just fall to the ground and more pop up. It has been so, so nice in this spot. And then we have our tick seed at the bottom. This was, I don't know if this was just happenstance, but it's growing horizontally. And I think a big part of that was Dizzy just like running and kind of like compacted it to the ground. But I tried to like, like pull it up with the pots but it's still it's growing just straight out so you know we'll take it it still has the beautiful like sunset flower color so we'll we'll go with it and uh, still enjoy it for the fall 
the last stop we have is in our courtyard. We have our climbing rose behind us getting kind of sparse blooms, but still beautiful up at the top. We did cut back our bleeding heart. I left the other bleeding hearts, their foliage, because it still looked okay. The big one, the main one, was very yellow and brown, so we just cut that back. We will be planting some more shade-loving annuals in this spot but for now it's a little bit bare. We liked having our honeysuckle kind of coming down. You can see a lot of the berries forming, so that's kind of nice having this over the top look right by our hydrangea right here. This is a mountain style hydrangea, so different than the other ones. Really pushing growth, which I like though, so over the next couple years we'll see some more blooms. And again with our limelight in the corner we do have look at this look at the birds just devouring and loving this sunflower came up from the ground from the turf from the fake grass sprouted and grew but we have our limelight here again you can see how heavy it is with the weight of all of the rainfall so oh yeah it's really wet still um <laughs> so once that kind of dries off a little bit it'll kind of perk perk itself back up but this has been beautiful 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 back here I'm glad that it is getting enough sunlight um, our roses are doing well this is that fall plant you can see it budded up it's going to have more of a white like wisteria type bloom coming out it has like another month or so though but it's it's almost there and then we have our white echinaceas just like our previous videos we leave our echinacea and our black-eyed susans the spent kind of bloom we leave that up for the fall and through the winter for foraging for the birds so same thing with like the sunflowers we'll make sure that the birds are able to kind of eat all of those seeds as much as they can before we kind of upheave everything and with the comb flowers and the echinacea we leave that so that throughout the winter they can the last thing that we wanted to show you was an update on our jellyfish arrangement that we did. We love it. It's doing so well. Let's turn around and look. We love the purple. It goes with the jazzberry really, really nicely, but look how long. I remember in the video I said, or the tag said that it only got like two feet or like a foot and a half to two feet and I'm like no no it gets a lot longer than that this is proof like that's that's a good four feet right there from from the base of the plant all the way down that's a good four feet so this is a beautiful kind of look with the purple flowers up there it's provided that sheen that we kind of liked and uh, really happy with it the impatience up there are doing really well they like the amount of sun that they're getting. And we kind of, we've really enjoyed those containers. All right, so that is our end of summer garden tour. We've really, really enjoyed all of the blooms this year, especially the dahlias. They were really showstoppers for us. And I'm really excited to get more varieties next year and maybe just fill up that whole bed with dahlias just to kind of overwhelm the sidewalk view of our neighbors. But we hope that you liked this video. Thank you for following us along in all of these journeys. We really appreciate you guys. And we hope that you continue watching us even though we're kind of cutting back a little bit for the fall and beginning of the winter so we can get our work done. But thank you for staying. We hope you stick around and continue watching us in the future. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to Empty and Gardening and we hope you're having a fantastic day. We will see you next month. Bye.